buongiorno. Eh, saluto e ringrazio tutti gli intervenuti e i presenti a questa conferenza stampa assieme a rappresentanti di 12 famiglie israeliane che si trovano qui a Roma per incontrare Papa Francesco e altri esponenti governativi e istituzionali con l'obiettivo di sollecitare e ottenere il prima possibile la liberazione dei loro cari e familiari rapiti e tenuti in ostaggio da Hamas a Gaza. Eh, siamo in tanti qui, eh, vi chiedo di, siccome non abbiamo tanto spazio, di rispettare anche le distanze o okay, che non avvicinarvi troppo se ci sono dei giornalisti dopo che vogliono eh, parlare. Okay? Voce non si sente? Ok, ok. Eh, quindi vi chiedo cortesemente, siccome siamo in tanti, di non avvicinarvi troppo alle famiglie dopo quando ci saranno anche le domande dei giornalisti, per lasciare spazio a tutti per vedere, ci sono tante telecamere qua. Eh, allora iniziamo, eh, traduco un, un soltanto, soltanto in ebraico. Birachti la shalom ta italkim, vodati la emalano chakut shalom in kan, la matara shalom in kan, la matara shalom in kan, la matara shalom in kan, la ולבקש את החזרת החטופים הביתה בהקדם האפשרי. ביקשתי מהעיתונאים לא להתקרב יותר מדי כדי לאפשר מרחב נעים ונוח. אני עכשיו אציג את השגריר שלנו לוותיקן. אינביטו אדסו סוואט שלנצה, רפאל שוץ, אמבשתו לדיזרעאל, פרסו לסנטה סדה, אפרנדר אל הפרולה. Since October 7, Israel is not the same country. Okay, I will, I will try to be as loud as I can. Uh, since, October, since October 7, Israel is not the same country as it used to be. And... Um, We are dealing with a tragedy. We are dealing with a tragedy of uh, biblical terms. Now, the media, uh, as as media, frequently goes from one crisis to another, but in Israel. Since October 7, it seems that time is frozen. We are, li we are living in a, different, in a different time. And the most crucial and important part of it right now is our concern for the welfare and the safe return as soon as possible of the families that were the, the individual and families that were kidnapped and are now in Gaza. I will uh, immediately uh, uh, leave the floor to the families. The meeting with the Pope this morning, I just want to say that it is part of an effort to keep the issue alive in the conscience of the world. Because as I said, media goes from one crisis to another. But for us, this is the only thing on our schedule right now. And we need the media attention and the world attention in order to make the return of our dear ones as soon as possible. And I say our dear ones because We are one family. You have here members of 12 families. All in all, we are speaking about 240 people, individuals, that are being held, are being kidnapped in Gaza, but we are all one family. Before concluding, I just would like to thank this center, the Pitiliani, for hosting us, especially to Rosella Veneziano e Emanuela Rimini. Thank you very much. We appreciate the gesture. And now I leave the floor to the families. Avete anche bisogno di una traduzione in italiano? È stato chiaro, l'ambasciatore? Tutto chiaro? Ok, allora posso procedere. Eh, 
Eh, allora, chiedo ora ai rappresentanti delle famiglie di parlarci molto brevemente dei loro familiari rapiti. Ani vakesh mikem, le saper biktsara, mikol echad mikem, et a sipu. טוב, שלום לכם, מלואיס קוניו, אני חי בקיבוץ ניר עוז, כפי ששמעתם בשבת השביעי לאוקטובר, הותקפנו על ידי מחבלים מחמאס, שפרצו לנו את הבתים, שרפו לנו, אנסו אותנו והרגו אותנו. e sono dal kibbutz Niroz, il sabato 7 ottobre siamo stati attaccati dai terroristi di Hamas che sono penetrati nelle nostre case, l'hanno bruciate, hanno abusato delle donne e ci hanno anche ucciso. Ben osaf leze, a tem roim po ani magzik, arbet munot, a yadaim lo mas pikot li, che de l'arot et kol bne mishpacha sheli che nikhtefu bo to yom le aza, kolel yeladim, banot, tinokot, Feod. Come potete vedere, inoltre, io tengo qui nelle, nelle mie mani tante, tante foto, tante immagini di tutti i miei, miei familiari. Le mie mani non bastano per tenere tutte queste immagini dei miei familiari che sono stati rapiti in quel giorno, tra cui ci sono dei bambini, figlie, neonati. Asa ne roze la ghid lachem, che ne ha yom nimza, במצב שאין לי, אין לי בית, כי היא נשרפה, אין לי משפחה, חצי משפחה איננה, ואנחנו, אני נמצא במצב שאני לא יודע מה יהיה מחר, ובטח לא מה יהיה מחרתיים. רוצה להודות לכם על זכות על זכות שאני נותן לי לדיבת אלה לפחות. תודה רבה. We're visiting my sister-in-law in Kibbutz near Yitzchak in the south of Israel on the 7th of October um, at around 11.15. Armed intruders broke into the house and they broke into the safe room and they took my daughter, who's 17 years old, Mia, and my wife, Gabriela, and my wife's sister, Clara Marman, and her life partner, Luis Har, and my brother-in-law, Fernando Nar uh, the Marman. They took them out of the safe room and they fired bullets into the safe room door to terrorize them, to scare them. And they herded them into one of their vehicles and took them away. We haven't seen or heard anything since. It's been 47 days and I'm alone. Every day I wake up, it's the same day and I, wait a minute or two to listen for the familiar sounds that I'm used to hearing and there's nothing. Our dog is missing and my family has been taken. In my life, it's not what it was and it never will be again. Thank you for listening to my story. Hello, I'm Nicole. I'm his little sister. This is Nick, my big brother. He was taken from his military base on the 7th of October. When the last, the last time I heard his voice, he was telling me that he's fine. He will be, will be fine and he know how to keep himself safe. My life and my family's, family life is not the same. He was my best friend, he was my big brother, he was my safe place, and the terrorist that took him hostage took the safe place of me. 
I want to I want I want your help so I could hug hug him again and I could see him back home with my family. Good day. My name is Evgenia Kozlova. My son, Andrei Kozlov, came to Israel about one year ago. He came from Russia, from St. Petersburg. Uh, he came to study. Andrei fell in love with Israel. He decided to receive Israel citizenship. On October the 7th, he was kidnapped from music festival Nova. Andrei is alone in Israel. All his family, me, his dad, his young brother, his grandparents live in Russia. I don't want, I don't know what to do because I should save my, my son. I should look for my son in Israel, but my younger son is in Russia. Now I don't know, is he, uh, is he alive? or not. And everybody of us need help of Italy, need help of all the world to save all the hostages. Thank you. My name is Michael Levy. I'm Or Levy's brother. On October 7th, Oren and Nav decided to take a break from their day-to-day -day life and celebrate in a music festival. They wanted to celebrate peace and love, but when they got there, Nav was murdered and all was kidnapped into Gaza. Enough and all as a two-year-old son. That's his teddy bear. S since that day, he is looking for them, he is calling for them. He wants to go home. His whole life changed. Our life changed. We don't know anything about his condition. We don't know if he's injured. We haven't heard from him ever since that day. We don't sleep, we barely eat, and we want him home now. We want Almog to have at least a father. He already lost his mother, and he, he needs his father. Thank you. Hello. My name is Mayan. I'm the daughter, the oldest daughter for Dror Kaplun. He has two more children, Noam and Moran, and five grandchildren. Uh, on October 7th, the Black Saturday, Dror and his wife were taken from their house in Kibbutz Beri. Hamas led them handcuffed for 300 meters from their house. Later on, Marcelli's wife was murdered together with their uh, neighbors. Dror was injured, but we don't know the sev severity of the injury. And we are all waiting for him. His oldest grand grandson has a birthday tomorrow. He's going to be 11 years old. This is the first birthday that he's not going to be with us. Let it be the last one. We need to bring him home. We need to bring them all home now. 
Thank you. Hello, I'm Yuval. My father, Alex, and my uncle, Itzik, were kidnapped from Kibbutz Niroz on the 7th of October. My uncle got shot while he was kidnapped. My father is a 75 years old man with a serious, ha serious heart disease. And he has to get his medication daily to survive. We don't know if he gets medication. We don't know if he survives this 47 days. We just want him back for his 13 children, 13 grandchildren and four children. My father is a historian of the Holocaust. He educated everybody, thousands in the world, about learning from the Holocaust. And now is a second Holocaust by Nazi Hamas. And all the world need to understand what happened in the 7th of October. All the war crimes we had. And condemn Hamas and bring them home. Bring them home now. The clock is ticking for them. I would like to stand to see you all and say thank you for listening to us. My name is Alexandra, and I'm here on behalf of my sister, Karina. And you can see her in this picture. She is my only sister, and she is all I have in this world. She was kidnapped from her bed in her pajamas with other girls. Other girls were murdered and she was taken hostage. My sister is a pure, innocent child. She wants to help people. And this is why I'm here. I want to ask you to help my sister so she can come home and then help others. I can remember crystal clear two things. The first is what she wrote me on the 7th of October morning before she was taken. She wrote me, and I'm citing, if I won't make it alive, please be happy in your life and take care of mother and father or life. Do not think and sorrow, live. This is her wish. This was her wish. And the second thing, is that by saying that she made me remember when we were young, when we didn't understand a lot of our lives, she always laughed and told that I will die before her because I'm the older sister and that she will live longer than I. And I'm here talking about it because I really want to die before her. And every time that she is there, with all the other hostages, every minute, every hour, is a critical time for them to stay alive. We do not know anything about them. We know that, that some are injured, some need medicine. Every one of them need to come home, and not, not in coffins. They should come home to tell their stories, to tell the stories of the other people who were murdered, so they can be our future. We need them safe and sound and alive. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is Yehuda. This is my son, Nimrod Cohen, 19 years old, who was captured with his friends near Reim. Since he's captured, and we saw on Hamas video, how he was captured. We didn't hear a word about him. We don't know what his condition. Red Cross never, I don't know how to say it, never bothered and never made any efforts to go inside and see the conditions of him, of all the other captured, how they are doing, who is injured, who is sick, who needs medicine. And our life just from that day changed. We don't have day and night. We're only focusing of his return and the returns of all the other ca captured people 
back home to Israel. Thank you very much. My name is Rachel, and this is my son, Hirsch Goldberg Poland. He's my only son. He turned 23 on October 3rd and went to the music festival with his best friend from childhood to celebrate. When the massacre started on Saturday morning, he and his friend and a bunch of other young people from that festival hid in a roadside bomb shelter, which came under attack. First, Hamas threw in hand grenades. Then they fired in an RPG. And then they sprayed the room with machine gun fire. Most of those young kids were dead. But some of the lucky ones were trapped under the dead bodies. And they told us what they saw. Hirsch and two other young men were wounded but alive. And Hamas came in and told them to stand up and come outside. When Hirsch stood up, they all told us that his left arm had been blown off from the elbow down. We have since seen a video that we have of him and these two other boys being marched out of the bomb shelter and put onto a Hamas pickup truck, which then headed toward Gaza. His last phone cell signal was at 1025 in the morning, October 7th. And that's the last time that we saw him. He sent us two text messages that we received as this was all unfolding at 8.11. The first text message said, I love you. And the second one said, I'm sorry. And I think he knew he was, that we were going to be suffering terribly. And he felt bad for us. And he was apologizing. That was 47 days ago that my heart has been buried in Gaza. And every day I change the number. And I pray and hope that the world will help all of us get our hearts out of Gaza. And I also worry for the other innocent people who are in Gaza also suffering on the other side. There are good, innocent Palestinian people who are also there, and we are aware of that. And I thank you all for coming to hear our story and to keep our stories alive until our loved ones come home and we can take the number off of the chest. Hello, I'm Yair from Kibbutz Beri. Uh, on October 7th, Hamas entered my kibbutz and killed about 85 people, kidnapped around 30 people, altogether about 110, which is about one-tenth of my kibbutz, of the population of my kibbutz. Um, I know each one of them personally, and amongst them is my sister and uh, my niece, Hila, who is going to be 13 years old next week. Um, I was hiding under my bed because I thought I don't want to be killed and I don't want to be kidnapped. I'll just pretend that nobody is at home and I hope they will not find me. My sister wrote me at 12.03 in the noon that she's okay. And then at 12.05 she sent a message that she's being kidnapped. Since then I don't have any information from her. I know she's been kidnapped with my niece in Gaza and another girl that was staying in their home named Emily. I don't know if she saw the sky since then. I don't know if she's uh, hurt. I don't know if she's able to go to the bathroom in a normal toilet, take a shower, get the medicine if she needs. I don't know if the Red Cross didn't even, even did anything to make it happen. I'm afraid not, and I want uh, to send a message to everyone who listened that Hamas needs to let Red Cross visit all the hostages, the kidnapped people, and of course we urge Hamas to, and the world to pressure Hamas to let all our kidnapped people 
go and return to Israel. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Adav Kipnis. I am also from Kibbutz Ve'eri. On the 7th of October, um, 12 members of my family were either murdered or kidnapped. Both my parents and my uncle and my father's caregiver uh, were uh, murdered in the slaughter. Um, the terrorists entered their house and shot them in the safe room. Uh, other than them, seven members of my family were kidnapped. Uh, my cousin and her husband, uh, their two children, Naveh and Yahel, which are three and eight years old. Uh, my aunt, Shoshan, my uncle's sister, Sharon, and her daughter, which is 12. Um, parents uh, cannot be saved anymore. We can't bring them back. But at least I have assurance that I know what happened and that they're dead. These people, all of them, we, we have no clue other than the videos that some of us have or some stories about them being kidnapped. We don't know if they're alive. We know some of them are injured. We know some of them need medication. We, we don't have anything other than that. Uh, we, we are here in this very difficult situation, spreading the word, these, these awful stories, to make sure that no one forgets that people will try to put themselves in our shoes to to have even the slightest feeling of not knowing where your family is, but knowing that they are in the hands of people that can't be trusted, and to urge anyone in power to make sure that they will be released safe and sound, and at the least give us information if they're even alive and if they're being taken care of. So thank you for coming here and trying to spread this message. Okay, so I invite you now to ask questions as all the members of the delegation, as you saw, they speak English. So you can ask in English. If someone needs to ask in Italian, there's no problem, I'm here. Okay, so I'll give you the time for that. There is a microphone, so just a second. Um, good morning, thank you for being here. Um, I'm Phil Pulella from Reuters, and I have a few questions that you can uh, share around yourselves or whatever. Um, just one second. This morning, the Pope, um, I just want to quote him precisely, so just bear with me one second. Uh, after, he's, after he met you, he, he said, this is what wars do. Now, I'm not quoting because I can't find it precisely, but he said, this is what wars do, um, but this... But this has gone beyond war, this is terrorism. So he was equivocating, he didn't say one side was practicing terrorism, he obviously implied that both sides were. I would like you to, anyone who wants to comment on that uh, statement, and also can you tell us a little bit about your meeting with him this morning, which is the reason why you're here, and also what are your feelings about the agreement that has been reached this morning to re for the release of 50 hostages? Could, could you please uh, repeat your names as you um, answer the questions because we can't see them from back here. Okay, uh, my name is Yehuda Cohen. Uh, regarding the meeting with the Pope, I wasn't there, my daughter was there. 
but uh, it was pretty much disappointing that uh, the meeting should have been long enough for all people to speak. And from what I heard, most of the people, including my daughter, didn't get the chance to speak. So I know that uh, his declaration was something general, uh, we have to end war and uh, so on. Uh, not really a mention of Hamas. So in, in a way, uh, we came all the way from Israel here to meet him. My daughter came all the way from Israel to meet him. And it's kind of, uh, okay, uh, end the war, and uh, I don't really have time for you. This is my uh, impression. Thank you. Now we know the terms of the exchange of 50 hostages. This is, these are women and children. I know my son isn't part of this exchange. I don't know how long it should wait. I should wait. I remember that Gilad Shalit was a hostage for five years. And if each of the remaining hostages is released once, once every five years, then my son will return in 1,000 years. I'm afraid it will be very difficult for me. It's all. I want to add, uh, my name is Alexandra. I want to add a couple of sentences about the meeting with the, with the father, with the old father, the Pope. Uh, I want to say thank you for his time, even if brief, for, um, for meeting us and listening to us. Even the few person who spoke, they delivered the message of our delegation and the message of the others who couldn't come all the way to Italy. His time is precious and we are very grateful and thankful for him listening to us and we are sure that he has done things before the meeting and he is doing currently and he will do in the future things that will help us and our families. We are all against the war. We do not want innocent to be injured or hurt or be murdered in any side. We want our beloved ones back. This is the main message. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nadav Kipnis. Uh, I wanted to uh, say that what you alluded to that both uh, sides are doing acts of terrorism is a false equivalence. Hamas and the terrorists attacked innocent people. Uh, children were taken, children were killed, women were raped in a party. Uh, Hamas, on the other hand, Israel is attacking uh, Hamas and there are casualties and these are very unfortunate but they are happening because Hamas is using their civilians, the Gazans, as human shields. We saw just some time ago that the Israeli army are the ones who managed to let the Gazan citizens leave and move to a safe space. So these are, what you're making is a false equivalence. And uh, regarding the meeting with the Pope, I felt that he was very compassionate and he listened to us and uh, he understood our, uh, our, our sorrow and he told us that he was uh, acting and is acting to make sure that they will return. 
sadly, no, uh, not everyone managed to speak, uh, but uh, we, can, we worked with uh, the things that we have. I wasn't making any false equivalency. It was the Pope who I was reading you almost word for word what the Pope I'm said. Sorry, I'm sorry. Extemporaneously, please. Sure. So I just make that clear to you because you said what I said. So you are saying the Pope is making false equivalency. Is that correct? Could you let his answer, please? He seems to be In our meeting, uh, the Pope did not say both acts. Uh, from what I understood, he talked about ours, our families being hostages as an act of terrorism. I did not uh, get the feeling that he said that Israel is, com Israel is committing any type of act of terrorism. This is... יהודה כהן, אני אחזור על זה בעברית. בתמצית מה שאני אמרתי זה שאני מאוכזב שהאפיפיור הקדיש זמן מועט, הרבה, זמן, הרבה פחות זמן ממה שהיה צפוי. הבת שלי הייתה שם, היא הייתה אמורה לספר את הסיפור של הבן שלי, של אחיה, אחיה התהום, ולא הגיע לזה. מעבר לזה שההצהרות שלו הן הצהרות שמדברות על לעצור את המלחמה, לעשות את ההרג, אבל הוא לא מתייחס ספציפית לחמאס כארגון טרור שיצר את המצב הבלתי אפשרי הזה. Quello che avevo detto prima è che sono deluso che il Papa, eh, il Papa abbia dedicato eh, poco tempo eh, di quello che aspettavo. Mia figlia doveva parlare anche lei, raccontare la storia di suo fratello gemello, eh, non ce l'ha fatta per questioni di tempo. Le sue dichiarazioni eh, parlavano eh, di fermare la guerra e l'omicidio, ma non specificamente... Eh, non parlava di Hamas e non è definito come organizzazione terroristica e quello mi è dispiaciuto I have to say that I personally don't agree with what he said I, fe I felt like uh, the conversation with the Pope was very helpful I think he took his time listened to us it's true that not all of us had 